What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I would, you know, sit down and talk with you guys and chat about my birth experiences and my birth stories with my two boys. I figured I'm now two months into this YouTube channel and I haven't really got too deep and personal and told you all the nitty gritty details that everyone loves to know. Um, or just the not so great stories that makes other mums feel much better about their life. So that's why I'm here today. Um, most of my channel so far has just been a lot of vlogging um, because obviously life's so hectic so the easiest thing rather than for me to take time to actually sit down and talk with you guys it's just easier just to have the camera on the go 24 7 and vlogging everything so I'm currently it's Sunday afternoon I'm currently just getting ready for the week um, Daniel my husband has been away for the whole week in um, overseas so I've been full-time single mum winging it and um, I've got some food on the stove right now boiling because we're making some puree for Hudson for the week I've got Hudson on the floor I've got Harley watching Paw Patrol that just turned off so give me a second because I need to go and put that back on Okay hey guys, Paw Patrol's back on, everybody is safe. <laughs> um, yeah, I got Hudson crawling around on the floor here. And yeah, I thought I would just, I don't know, have a chat about my birth experiences with both of my boys. They were really beautiful and absolutely not what I expected them to be at all. Um, so if I take it right back to the beginning uh, with Harley. So I found out I was pregnant with Harley, which was super exciting. He's my first baby. Um, and. I guess when you find out you're pregnant, you get a little bit nervous about, okay, this is really exciting, but this thing has to like come into the world somehow. So how is this going to happen? So what I did is I did some research and I came across hypnobirthing. Um, and one of Daniel's friends actually that he knew from Melbourne does hypnobirthing classes. Um, she was amazing. So we actually signed up for one of her courses and did hypnobirthing. And it was so freaking beautiful like wow if you are pregnant or your partner is pregnant like anybody you know Hudson's playing with the camera so this is fun just leave it please darling do you want to come and be in my video all right Hudson would like to make an appearance guys say hi he's very dirty is anybody else that mum that just like never puts bibs on their kids and then always regrets it. I don't know why, but for some reason I just never use bibs and then I always regret it. It's just more cleaning, but then I feel like now I've got to clean this, but at least this just goes in the laundry. Uh, uh. So anyway, so we did hypnobirthing with Harley, which was so beautiful. And if, as I say, if you've got anyone, any family members, you, your partner, like somebody around you uh. in your life that is really close to you is pregnant, I would highly recommend gifting them um, the hypnobirthing experience because it was just like so calming and it really looked at it from a natural like beautiful perspective rather than like the medical ouch this is going to hurt this is a lot of pain this is going to be really painful I've got to push this thing the hypnobirthing is just completely opposite and it really calms you and centers you and brings you back to your breath um, and the awareness of the breath. It also is amazing um, for partners who are kind of nervous about the process as well because it teaches them a lot and how they can be there to support you. So we did that with Harley um, and then probably halfway through the hypnobirthing course I was like maybe I want to do a natural birth with Harley um, and whether that be in the water or I knew it was definitely going to be at a hospital so we were booked into the hospital sorry not booked into the hospital but I knew that it was going to be at the hospital I didn't want like an at home birth um, but yeah I thought maybe I want like a natural birth or like whether that's in the pool or on the floor or wherever it is I just thought I could potentially go this unmedicated um, and it really empowered me to feel that way so anyway I had I ended up having some high blood pressure issues with Harley and I actually ended up um, being diagnosed with preeclampsia and IUGR which is intrauterine growth restrictions so Harley's growth basically had got to a certain point at about 
what was it about 32 33 weeks and then it just kind of plateaued whereas at 32 33 weeks they should be just like soaring you know that's when their massive growth happens and he wasn't doing that so um my obstetrician had called that very early in my pregnancy and said that this is potentially a thing um your blood pressure's high i did have uh, family history of high blood pressure my mum had the same thing with not me but my sister uh, my younger sister so yeah got to about 32 33 weeks in my pregnancy it was a really healthy pregnancy other than that um, no no issues other than like swollen feet and extra fluid um, but it was totally fine and all manageable and then, yeah, 32, 33 weeks, and they said, okay, we really need to keep an eye on his growth now and make sure that he is, you know, like, keeps on going up. Um, and what I had to do is I had to get monitored weekly um, in the hospital, and then I had to, at about 34 weeks or 35 weeks, my obstetrician actually sent me into the hospital to get steroid injections. So basically I had to get the steroids injected into me so that they could be passed on to Harley to develop his lungs properly, um, to make sure that his lungs were strong enough to come into the world if there was the case where he did completely stop growing and we needed to get him out early, um, then his lungs would be ready for that. I'm just gonna turn this down because we're cooking. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we had uh, steroid injections for Harley. So anyway, so then it got to 36 weeks and we did the 36 week scan. Um, and my obstetrician called me back that afternoon and he said, hey, I've got your results back from your scan today. Um, obviously it was just a growth scan to see how everything's tracking and he has stopped growing. So we need to get him out and get him into this world sooner rather than later. Um, just to fatten him up and make sure that he is a healthy baby because there's no point him staying in there because he's not getting what he needs from you because of my high blood pressure. Um, so he gave me like three days notice. This was on the 20th, was this the 20th, 19th I think of December. So obviously me freaking out, Harley's due date wasn't until the 15th of January. Um, so I was like, oh no, we've got Christmas plans, like what are we going to do? So we had to move all of our Christmas plans forward. We actually had an, a really, very early Christmas day on the 21st of December that year, in 2021. And um, yeah, and then 23rd of December, which was a Thursday, we were booked in to have a cesarean. So I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to use, you know, the natural hypnobirthing techniques that I'd learned. But in saying that, I still got to put a lot of techniques that I did learn to practice like, you know, coming back to your breath um, and just keeping calm. It was amazing that Daniel had learned so well how to support me during that time because I feel like without him, being the freaking most amazing human that he was, I just probably would have freaked out a little bit, whereas the whole experience was really calming. And then it didn't even occur to me that since he was gonna be such a small baby that there was the potential to go into the nursery. I just thought, oh yeah, my baby's coming, he's gonna be small, so we need to get him into this world and fatten him up, which is gonna be fine. Um, we'll get him out and that'll be it. And then once he was born, they actually weighed him and he was 1.9 kilos and he was tiny. Like he was such a little boy. That was four pound one. And um, my obstetrician was there and the pediatrician and they made the decision that Harley needed to go to the um, neonatal intensive care unit. So, um, so we had to go in there for, he was in the Humi crib for... I can't actually remember the details, but I think he was in the Humi crib for 24, either 24 or 48 hours, um, and they were just keeping an eye on him. He, his breathing was totally fine. Um, he didn't have to have any breathing machines or anything, but he was just being monitored in there, and then, well, maybe it was a bit longer, actually. Maybe it was like three or four days that he was in the Humi crib, because I remember him transitioning out of that 
to go into the big boy cot. So yeah, so maybe it was a couple of days in the Humi crib. But as I say, not on oxygen, not on anything else. The, his size was the issue. So the heat in the Humi crib was keeping him warm because he didn't have his own fat on his bones um, to keep himself warm. So they had to help him with that. And he did also have a feeding tube through his nose. So that was the whole thing about getting him out ah. early was to get the feeding tube ah. in his nose, down into his stomach, and then basically they would just pump ah. milk through the tube into his stomach so that he didn't have to suck. So apparently when babies suck, they ah. lose a lot of their um, fat because they ah. are using a lot of energy that they haven't used before. Ah. So they didn't want him to do that. They didn't want him to be on the boob straight away. Um, we didn't try the boob until I think about day three, maybe, or day two. Um, but it was just to get my milk flowing and then he would be fed through the tube. So we didn't have to work very hard to get my milk flowing. And then I had to be on the pump as well to get my milk flowing through the pump. He's here. Hi. Do you want to say hello? Do you want to come up? Here he is. Come on. Come see mum. Yeah, ready? Up. Oh, oh dear. Here she is. Hi. 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 Hi, Harley. Hello, Harley. Bottles. Yeah, Harley's stolen Hudson's bottles, so Hello, Harley. you can tell because you got milk around your face. Harley's. Harley's. Did you cut your hair? Harley. Harley's. Harley. We're just telling everybody about your birth story no. and how you were born. No, Harley. Do you remember being born? No, 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 Harley. Harley's what? Princess. I'm going to touch the camera. Touch the camera. Mm -hmm. Alright, you want to get down? What do you need? Oh no, we can't get that. He wants to get the magnets. Magnets off the fridge. Oh, mummy's struggling. She's going down. She's going down. Anyway, so Hallie was in the nursery for a total of 10 days. Um, and basically we just had to get his birth weight back up because they lose weight. Uh, we had to get it back up and over two kilos before he was allowed to be um, let out into the real world and come home. So that was a really sad day on day six. I um, left the hospital and we went home um, and it was really sad the drive home leaving the hospital without my baby. I was really emotional that day. Um, but I knew that he was fine. He was totally healthy and happy. It was just his weight and it was just a matter of time before he could be home. It wasn't like there was any serious health concerns there. Um, so I do feel for a lot of families who have, you know, babies who have been in the nursery who have serious health issues. And I think it's such an amazing, like the women in there, they do such an amazing job. And, um, every opportunity I get to give back to babies in need like that who have to be in the nursery it just holds a special place in my heart so so yeah that was Harley's birth experience so 10 days in the nursery uh, cesarean after full hypnobirthing course hypnobirthing natural birth plan but that's all right we threw that out the window didn't we and then it came to Mr Hudson and so Hudson was born at 38 weeks via cesarean. So as soon as we found out that we were pregnant with Hudson, we had to um, have a cesarean because they were only 18 months apart. Um, and basically my pregnancy with Harley, because of his size wasn't like a, a big healthy size, my belly didn't actually stretch too much. Whereas with Hudson, everything was tracking perfectly for him and he was set to be a good big size baby. Um, which meant that my belly was going to really stretch this time and it would have put too much pressure on my scar to be able to birth him naturally. So we booked in another cesarean for that and that was a beautiful experience as well, wasn't it, Hudson? Yeah, you were a good boy. Yeah, we didn't know if you were a boy or a girl. Yes, and then you came out a boy and we were so happy. Yeah, and then you weed all in mummy. Yes, you were weeing everywhere. It was so yucky when, while you obstetrician held you up to say it's a boy and then he starts weeing straight in my open belly which was just lovely um, and then Hudson actually had a little bit of issues with his lungs when he was born so um, apparently it's quite normal for babies born via cesarean that because their um, bodies haven't been pushed through the birth canal that it, that's when it forces the fluid out of their lungs to prepare them to be breathing on their own 
Um, so because he was born by a cesarean, he had fluid on his lungs um, and he had to go on the CPAP machine. So for 36 hours, like it wasn't two days, it was just a little bit more than one a day, more than 24 hours, um, just to force that fluid out of his lungs. So once they did that, that was probably interesting because he was a healthy weight, but when he was in the nursery, he, it looked a little bit more scary than Harley, even though Harley was such a small boy, he didn't have the machines everywhere, whereas Hudson was a big boy, but he had the the thing on his face and it was a little bit scary for a little bit there. If you're getting hot, tell you. I'm going to go and change your nappy. We'll come back. We'll check back in in a minute. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Oh my god, Hudson just had the biggest poo ever. Um, so that's all clean and now he's just rolling around in the nude, which is lovely. So yeah, so Hudson's story was, um, yep, cesarean birth in the nursery for 36 hours on the CPAP machine. And um, other than that, we actually checked out of hospital with Hudson a day early. So we he was born on a th Wednesday. We were due to go home on this Monday, but we actually checked out on the Sunday because we were totally comfortable with everything. He was really healthy once that fluid came off his lungs and we really missed Harley and we just wanted to get home and be a family. So yeah, those are my two birth experiences, two cesareans, um, which is interesting. And I just think that it's so hard. Like when you're pregnant, people are always like, oh, don't have a birth plan because pl birth plan is, you know, never going to go the way you want it to. Nature will take its course, blah, blah, blah. And it's so, it's so true. But you just, when you're in it and you're having your baby for the first time, you just, you want to do what you want to do and it's totally fine. But the only thing that I could recommend is do hypnobirthing with you and your partner because it is amazing what you learn and how you learn to really come back to your own um, body and just embrace the experience basically and just know that women have been birthing for hundreds of millions of years like it's totally natural you're not going to die it is going to be painful but we're going to get through this and that's what made me like so empowered to be like wow I can totally do this unmedicated let's go um, secretly probably really happy that I didn't <laughs> have to do that unmedicated and naturally it all worked out for the best but um yeah and the others as i say the other thing just the, your partner just knowing how to support you is so beautiful like i reckon it just made our experience 10 times better than what it would have been by doing hypnobirthing the way that daniel knew how to look after me and care for me and just be my person you know the one person that i could really just lean on and have there to support me and trust that he had my absolute best interest at heart no matter what was going on um, there was a moment when Hudson I was laying on the table and they were injecting me and I was about to you know I just had sorry when I say injecting me they just put my epidural in and I was about to um, get cut open and I went super dizzy and I've never felt like that in my life where it was like I just felt like the weight of the world was on my chest and my stomach and I couldn't breathe and I, the lady was like, are you okay? And I went all pale um, and they fixed it within a couple of minutes. It probably was 10 seconds, but they fixed it very quickly. But I still didn't freak out in that moment because I knew that I had my person with me and he was there fully alert, fully aware, like right next to my head, I knew that I was safe and no matter what was going on, it was going to be fixed and it was going to be okay. So yeah, those are my two birth stories, everybody. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you've got any questions regarding cesareans or I'm going to pop a link down Oh, my light just turned off, which means it's time to go, but I will pop a link down below about the hypnobirthing classes that we did um, because it was amazing. So if you need somewhere to go, she does online classes as well. So I would highly recommend that. So yeah, thank you everybody.